Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis, and today we're going to work on a zero hour normal difficulty guide. A solo legend guide? That's going to be pretty brutal. Here. My honest recommendation is to do that with a group, because even oh, for me, I don't know when that one's going to happen. But normal, 40 minutes, it's definitely doable. So, a couple of recommendations when you go in. One, a uh, machine gun just to start mowing down the ads that are in front of you is going to be quite a good idea. So I do recommend that. Uh, some ranged weapons with regards to like Polaris Lance. Um, something like that's going to be really good to have a lot of the way through. Polaris Lance honestly is one of the best ones to bring in here for a lot of the places where you're going to have some ranged combat going on. Mountaintop actually does some work. You've got Briggs in both the first early section and both the boss itself. It's one of those things with special ammo which will get a decent amount of it on the ground. And if you can find one that's got... You know, Vorpal's a bonus, auto-loading holster is nice, but there is just some benefit to having this because the Briggs don't have crit spots, so trying to hit them with a sniper rifle or get close enough with a fusion rifle and probably get killed, Mountaintop does really do something special here, so it is one I highly recommend for that. Now, one thing I do recommend, I'm sitting on the EDZ. I came here, I hit a rally flag, and I hit my rally flag with solar reserves. There is a rally flag right before the boss room, but if you want to start out with as much as possible, then you can definitely do this and make sure you have your like full triple reserves chest piece on as you boot up the mission and then swap once you actually go into it so you can keep those reserves when you start out the mission. Other than that, you do have an arc threat, so I'm going to go on my normal chest piece, double arc damage reserve, and then solar because there's still some fire and stuff in here. Everything else is going to be... Um, Probably a little better if I could actually have my build correct. And then just my usual survival build. I'm running Precious Scars. I'll swap over to Pyro Gale Gauntlets for some damage at a couple of points. You guys will see most of that as we go. 100 Resilience where possible. I'm not running a healing grenade because I've got Precious Scars. But if you want to do a healing grenade, that is not a horrible idea. So max ammo. Get that going. Arc Threat. So you've got Arc Resistance. A little bit of solar as well. So let's jump in. All right, so as soon as you see things load up, swap over to your proper chest piece just so you don't forget. And that way I've got 386 in reserves working here for this first section. And then again, when you get to the boss fight, remember you're going to get a rally flag. So you can use just damn near all of this ammo. But we're going to try and use our machine gun as much as possible to also help ourselves get our super up so we can use that on the brig. So when you start here, I'm going to throw a grenade to start cooking everything a little bit here. Take care of your snipers that are going to be over there. All of these guys do hurt just a little bit. Try and use this wall for a little bit of cover. I have my hammer back. And again, I'm not going to do this the most efficient possible, but I do still want to show you guys what you at least can do over here once things start cooking. And again, we are on a solar build this season for the artifact, so that helps quite a bit as well. grab any orbs you got don't need to run too far around and reload as we go all right so again that first room about a minute that was actually a little long because my stupid opening section but again just try and really be efficient through here i'm gonna try and take out the snipers that i can but i can get a good angle on and again just use your angles here take out the shanks watch for the snipers that are going to be behind the heavy shank over here And again, even something like Mountaintop here may hit, may not. But I'm going to try and take out at least a couple of these snipers from range if I can. Kind of a hit or miss hope that if you're going to hit these guys. Now again, I've got Precious Scars for healing, so a healing grenade here would probably be be a good thing, but solar kills give me heals, so that's how I'm able to do what I'm doing. And again, taking these guys out, you're gonna have your heavy shank over here a little bit. So if you can get that going, I've got my super up. So what I want to do is actually cook those guys down there with the brig. I want to actually switch over Pyrogale, so then I can go full super. Just hopefully absolutely roast him. 
and then go for the front crit spot, get the finisher. Now the heavy shank is still going to be over there, so I just want to play it cautious, but should be in pretty good shape at this point. I have used most of my ammo right now, so I'm not in the best shape, but we are going to try and go with something like Sunshot or Polaris Lance here to try and kill a lot of the adds to try and get most of our super energy back. That way we can use our super again on the heavy tank in the next room. So again, trying to maximize, I had 370, 80 some odd bullets and they're mostly gone. So that's why I say it's like jump in with reserves. And if you jump in from say the tower, you're not gonna be coming in with as many reserves as you would like. So that's why it's important to consider how many reserves you have and where you're coming in from. Because if you come in from a social space, you won't come as high. So I saw some heavy ammo drop there, which is good. So I know I've got some. Trying to take out the Vandal Snipers here just is going to help me out a little bit. And just try and clear this upper deck from this corner where you where you can. A lot of these are going to be solar shields. So you can see that's going to be just really, really helpful. A lot of things there are going to just go down in flames, quite literally. Now those guys up there, they're going to be a little annoying. Polaris Lance is really nice though because you've got the ability to get those nice explosions going on. And when you get like the chain of explosions going on, you get a lot of infinite ammo working. Also with an exotic, you do have a better chance at getting some heavy ammo dropping, which hopefully you will. And again, this is a little more of a cautious run. I'm not trying to do like a flawless run. If that happens, so be it, but that's not the goal here by any stretch. They'd get a couple of bricks to drop. So you want to check and see if you got any more ads waiting for you. I've got all the fun going on down below. I'm just gonna go for the super. I did not switch to Pyrogale, so this isn't gonna be quite as effective as I would have liked. So again, if you can see the side open up, this is a good time to come in with uh, bigger shots. I don't know if I'm gonna be effective enough to actually take him out. So close. See, told you, not flawless, not going for flawless here. If you guys want to go for flawless, I could play more cautious as I go through this, but also flawless is going to be a bit of a bear at certain points. Try and find the front. There you go. It's like, I know I saw it drop over here. Finish this one up. And now we got Polaris Lance. We got Mountaintop working. We got a good amount of ammo. Come around the corner. Just keep cooking. And again, this is why, if you can get, and again, some of this you guys are going to be like, I got no heavy ammo to drop. Make sure you got some scavenger mods on, make sure you've got those that are going to at least help you manage part of this. And then you just don't really stop through here. Going as quick as you can, trying to kill all the adds. There's usually one more drag over there. And then as you work through, just whatever you find effective. Like for me, throwing hammer is pretty good sometimes. Solar melees are going to be nice, depending on what you're throwing at them, how quickly you can get them back. And just get your run on. You got one up here at the top. Of course, it's fun when you miss. Now, I know if I can get a second hit, now every one of my hammers is going to be stronger as I go down the road here. So that should kill him. That'll kill him. Turn around and kill him. Keep going. And again, just use your subclass the best as you can. Now, you're also going to want to bring, say, if you have a mobility type exotic for one of these jumps. It's just going to help you shorten some of the jumping up and it's going to smooth out a little bit of this transition. So slide under here, face the wall, and then turn 90 so you can catch this little opening. And again, I'm going to go fast just to show you guys relatively quick through here. I'm not going to be the fastest person through here ever. So I'm not going to be like a record holder by any stretch, but I'm going to try and move quickly so you guys can see roughly how much time things can take if you're kind of decent at running through this one not claiming much expertise here to the left through here hit the first door turn around catch the fall 
And just walk forward so you don't fall down the trap. Jump down here. And then down the back. Machine gun here. Just get this guy fast. Now what you want to do... This is somewhere like Lion Rampants will help me. Depending on if you got like um, triple jumps. This little drain all the way down. For me, it's just I know I'm able to like line it up this way and land it. And I don't have to go through all of that around there. And that's just going to save you a mountain of time. And the fact that I know I get a rally flag before the end of this is really, really helpful. Now, when it comes to Trevor and this little section... Um, Trevor's going to be that robot. It is all about trying to be as fluid as possible to run through this place um, without really stopping. So when I get to a certain point, I'll show you guys it kind of like is where Trevor initiates. Now, if I can do it without really a break in my falls and keep my momentum going, this is one of those that gets rough. Now, these are new. So the exploder shanks that actually are hanging out here. Usually what I will do is I'll like use these rafters that I can shoot between. And then throw myself into the wall, catch it here, and then just run forward, look down between, same thing, find my wall. Walk forward, look down between. Same thing over and over. This one just takes a little bit more ammo. And then again, look for your wall, catch your landing and just go straight to the edge. Now, when you get to this point, having your jumping um, type boots on if you got them, depending on your subclass, will help. This one's not quite as bad as Whisper, but it's still a little weird. Just as long as you're kind of close over here. It's not that bad. There's a switch at the end if you're with a group. So if you're running first, you can help everybody else be faster by hitting that switch. And then through here. And again, when you're in these little tunnels, I know it looks stupid to jump like that, but it actually will speed you up. Come around this corner. Now, this is where I think Trevor is going to be. So when you get to this point, d try not to stop moving as little as possible. And it'll help you with your Trevor timing. So through here, turn. And you want to look down and you want to see Trevor go by. When he goes by, if you follow him on the path that I show you, you will be able to do this without running into Trevor again. So that's the key. When you get this little break, turn left. And this is going to be your path to get through this one. This is what I've found success. Now, maybe somebody's going to do this differently. Make sure you activate it as you go by. You don't want to miss one. But if you do it this way, you should be able to manage without seeing Trevor, like, chasing you down at all. But now, this one, what we're going to do is we're going to go across. And it's all a pretty tight timing window. You're going to see him go by. And again, chase him down here. And we're just going right behind him. But then we're going to reverse gears and go back the other direction. Make sure you hear that beep. That's kind of important. All right. So now we're going to go same side. All the way up. Once you get here. And then we're going to go back through that middle section once you're done with this one. So return back the same way you came. Make sure you hear the beep for the activation. Use those audio cues. I promise you they help. And then if done correctly, it's usually pretty smooth. I was actually surprised I remembered how to do this. So then over here... Should be able to go. Grab this. Hit the switch, run on by, and I think Trevor just went by here. But we should be relatively safe. Try not to stop moving, and your timing should be pretty good. You do it right, catch the switch here, and you're good. Now this one, I skip the elevators. All I do is jump back and forth between the walls. That's it. This, any jump should do it. I did this way totally fine without line rampant, so that's not like a required thing. And I just do this because those elevators are stupidly slow. And I'd rather not wait. Until you actually fall all the way down to the bottom. Well. 
There you go, guys. There's my first massive flub in the middle of this run. Again, if I can do every bad moment that I'm going to have in the opening combat section, have that little fall happen, and I'm still going to finish it, hopefully with plenty of time, then hopefully this shows you that you can do it as well. Because I've done this with multiple loadouts. When you get up here, make sure you kind of check and make sure you're not going to hit the roof, as I did. Now, when you come down here, you can actually do this pretty well if you give one little jump for a little slowdown. Should be alright. You typically won't die anymore, but... Kind of one of those if you just want to slow things down a little bit. Curve the corner. When you fall in here, stop, turn around, go to the left, find this little L pipe, this symbol down here, which you're looking for to go forward. Your path through here, you're going to start on, you know, second one over here to the right, go up one, over to the wall, up two, actually three, sorry, over two, down one, over to the wall, and all the way out. That's your path on normal. That is not your path for legend. Legend will be different. So, at this point, we got about 26 minutes, and then we should have the combat encounter. Combat is a lengthy one, so for the person who manages to do this on solo legend difficulty, more power to you. I know Esoteric will probably have it done before I even have this video posted, but that dude's a beast. Now, if you get to here, stop and place your rally banner. This is another good place. You can max out your reserves, so you're able to do that. And then I've got Mountaintop, I've got Polaris Lance, and I've got my machine gun to clear out some ads. Because not much is really going to be too beneficial for me. I'm going to swap this back over. And I'm going to go turn off my Lion Rampants because I don't need mobility anymore. And I've got this on for survivability. So let's go in. Now, first thing I do with Polaris Lance is I'm going to back off and try and clean up as much as I can for these guys. Now, the nice thing that I would do, this is why auto-loading holster mountaintop is actually pretty nice through here. Mostly because just every so often, I'm going to fire at these turrets, just so I can clean them off the board. I don't want those turrets to be anything that messes with me. And if occasionally, auto-loading mountaintop can actually manage to take care of that for me, then I'm going to let it. So the turrets, you don't really have to worry as much about them as you might think, but they are just going to be really annoying. So is big guy... So again, right now, this thing just doing infinite ammo crits, getting these little explosions, and then occasionally just come over here, take out a few adds, and then work him down. Try and stay out of line of sight of the boss. That'll help you kind of have less shots coming at you from him. So if you can line of sight the boss, that'll help. Sorry about my nose. Still getting over being sick. Occasionally, I try and take one of those out just so they're less to worry about. And then every so often, if he's not shielding, then you're going to get the option to, like, going to take some of those guys, guys out with an explosion. Yeah, the boss is annoying through here, without a doubt. That's why a little bit of solar resistance is good, but as arc is the surge, you're going to want that arc resistance on there. I should be able to take out that turret. I'm going to come up with my machine gun now, try and stay line of sight. That's just a bad button push there, sorry about that. Now, for conserving ammo's sake, what I actually did last time is I came up here, and I got a really good line of sight on him. Now, the perk of being up here was I was able to actually get a good line of sight on him, and his shots were actually hitting this thing. So if I got me and this giant wall between me and him, I can just sit here and cook him. It made my life a little easier. He will eventually move. And then again, I came up here, and I got, like, a little more vertical than before. I have so much ammo working right now this actually works fairly well so again same thing with him what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work him down just where it's safe if you're going for flawless this may not be the best spot I'll be totally honest but it did have some benefits up here it actually works really well when I got in the back so if you feel like you can strafe a little more over here just you know play the wall back here I'm gonna just strafe back and forth I got him to move. Now, this is where it actually worked really well for me because when he was inside, 
his shots would actually go up into the roof and he wasn't able to hit me. But again, I don't know if this is the best strategy. I don't feel like this is a cheese spot because it's just in the environment and I jumped up here from the rafters and it seems to be pretty effective. Now the guys in there are solar. The first ones up front are void. The ones on the two sides are gonna be arc and the ones in this back room are actually solar. So having a solar weapon for this section, just a bonus. One random drag gonna ruin my day over here. So again, try and take out the shanks that remain. Now he is gonna move to this side over here underneath me, but you're also gonna have these trip mines. So if you do feel like you wanna take some of the trip mines out, now is a good time. If you got ammo on the front deck, you could grab that if you feel like you want to. Taking out the trip mines early though, not a horrible idea. Taking a little more damage up here than I would like, but it's still pretty effective up here. A little bit of movement will give you some flexibility. And again, once he gets out of there, I will move too. But this little box up here gives me some freedom. And again, if you've taken out the turrets, you can run around up here pretty freely. I'm going to grab one thing of ammo right now. Try and have some of this stuff go. And again, just so I'm not worried about them later, I'm going to take out a few of these trip mines. But he's moved over here. I'm going to go for the shanks first. This is why arc resistance is nice, because you just have a lot of arc coming at you. And there are about a million of those little um, trip mines. Now for this section, I'll typically come back here. Just gives me a little more verticality again to go after him. I'm not saying it's like the best and not saying there's nothing that can hit you over here. But if you can find just any line of sight's gonna work, whatever works for you. Again, if you wanna come up here and cook him with a machine gun, you can do that too. If you got some ammo, do it. So now you're gonna get a lot more ads coming in. You're gonna have some marauders coming in. They will be stealthy, so watch out for those. They're gonna be solar, so then they're gonna hurt. They always typically have a little more pop in their uh, hits when they get close to you because those solar shotgun pops hit hard. Picking up a couple shanks in the air. And again, I'm playing more cautious. I probably should be focused on the boss right now. We are gonna get to the point where we have the big uh, tanks. So this is not like the most efficient run. We're just trying to get his health down right now. Again, watch for the vandals. They will work on snipes on you. And what I'm trying to do is I am trying to actually save my super, even though I probably would get it back, but I'm trying to save my super for uh, at least one of the tanks so I can take them out. When you get him low enough, and this is why this weapon is really good. You can just keep firing, get a good amount of damage on him, and at some point he'll leave, tanks will come in, he comes back in brig form, he's about to go. There he goes. So again, the marauders here, still cooking, doing what they're doing. Try and look for them so they don't really catch you so much off guard. This is also why you take out the turrets. This is also why Mountaintop's actually quite good through here. I don't know why it's still firing while I'm here. That seems a bit mean. I don't know if I'm going to be able to kill it because the reload kind of ruined my DPS on him here. If you can sit here and just cook a leg, you might be able to knock it right back down. Just watch. I don't think the tanks will technically shoot each other, so be careful, but they might. I'm going to switch over. And again, I'm not going for a flawless run, so if I die, it's not as big of a deal. I'm switching over to Pyro Gale just because I know that's what I want to use on the big guy when he comes back. If I want to initiate kind of my damage.
And again, machine gun's gonna be strong enough to probably take out a leg anyway. There we go. So if you just focus straight up on one of the legs, you can probably drop him right back down pretty quickly. And then you're gonna be ready up here if I'm gonna do something like Pyrogale or a super that I can do right straight away to the boss. So I wanna do... I don't know if that's gonna be completely wasted, which it very well may be, but it does look like I got a chunk on the big uh, big boy. I wasn't sure if the shield was gonna to hurt too much uh, from the servitor, but seems to have done all right. Now at this point, you really can't stand still. You are gonna get rocketed pretty constantly. So what I'm looking to do now is try and take out some of the adds, try and dodge some of the shots and just make sure if that red glow is over my head that I move. The best thing you can do. And this is why the solo flawless is gonna be rough. Um, even just on normal difficulty, there's just a lot of random ways that you're gonna die. And there's only so much you can do to try and account for everything. You're probably just not gonna. Yeah, like this guy over here. Ow. Where'd they go? And again, part of what you can do is while you're going through with all your special ammo, is just work on getting shots on the boss. You don't have to take out everything else. It's not necessary. All you're trying to do is take out the big boss and not get nuked in the process, kind of like that. Okay, he's just gonna juke my stuff here without even trying. But again, if you do enough and you're able to actually get back. But it would seem I've managed to kill the servitor. Did not know I killed the servitor. This is also a time where I might just kill some of the vandals that are around. The vandals will hurt you. And it's not really necessary to like leave them up because their shots are going to hurt. You got enough stuff coming down from above and sideways at you that you don't need the, the vandals getting up there in your face. And again, these guys are solar, so you can take out some of these guys in clumps. And their shields start popping. And again, we got 14 minutes left. We're doing fine. A few shanks left, not too many. But this is again where getting those uh, mountaintop shots off it's just a way to continue to get some damage on the guy, on the big guy. While you're doing other stuff. So auto loading holster, mountaintop. I don't know what all the perfect combinations are, but it's just really helpful to be able to take that just mini missile rocket and then do exactly that. Now that I've got his face off, now he's going to launch up into the air. So he's probably going to try and blast. So you got to be moving. He's gonna do a couple of those three big blasts that don't stand still very long. I don't know if he ever quits, he should. There we go. We should be able to just cook him down here. I'm gonna die to that one. He's got a lot coming at you at once. And no, machine gun is not the best option here. It is just an option. Ow. But finishing with 13 minutes, as poorly as this has gone, you guys can tell it's doable. It's just that opening section you don't wanna wait around on. Timing-wise, that worked out. So we are good. Make sure before you go running up there that something else isn't gonna kill you. And then when Mithrat shows up, Good to see our buddy. How you doing, sir? And grab your loot, which will typically get you your brand new weapon. But I've already picked this thing up a couple times trying to make some guides. So let's get back to orbit and we will wrap this thing up. As you guys can see, this is a bit of a mess of a mission and Legend Solo 
I'm not entirely sure when I'm going to get that one done. But to be able to go through this and get it by yourself, I would then get a group together to try and do Legend. Because solo, even for me, seems like it's going to be a bit of a struggle. So that is how to get Outbreak perfected. Then when you get the frame, um, you'll finish up your quest. You'll be able to craft that one. Now going through Legend and doing the quest that you've got to do uh, with regards to the actual like exotic part for like Outbreak Refined. So one of the first parts is uh, Inert Siva Clusters. Just go to defeat Fallen in the Cosmodrome. They are pretty random when they drop. It's not like one for one. It was like five or six or ten to one. So you're just going to have to kill a decent amount of Fallen. Then you're going to have to go in and do the Legend switches, which I have not done yet, but that's going to be the next part of the mission. Then you're going to have to beat it on Legend. So you're going to have to run this thing on Legend. So that's where a different guide, different video, and likely a group for most everybody, including myself, will be involved. But for now, that is how you get the mission, or that is how you get the exotic. That is how you complete Whisper. I can't talk. So for now, that is how you get the exotic weapon outbreak perfected. That is how you complete the zero hour mission by yourself. And at least on a Titan, that's one way to do it. And I think all of the classes should probably be able to do that pretty well too. So thank you guys for tuning in. If you enjoyed this one, drop a like below, hit that subscribe button. You guys know we are like three weeks away from Final Shape and there's going to be lots to come then. But as always, if you want to find me on Twitch or Twitter, it's Ibantis. If you're new and you enjoyed it, drop a like, leave a comment, or as I said, subscribe. Nice free way to support the channel and I hope to see you back. Have a good one.